So in this particular video, we're going to be going over all different types of transformations, whether it be radical functions, we're going to be doing exponentials, logarithmic, so we're just going to be doing quite a few. But we're going to start with the basic graph of the square root of x. Okay. So right here, this is your parent function, the square root of x right here. There's the graph. But if we were to look at this, and I want you guys to take a look at it, just put this in your journal here, okay? If I said y equals negative radical x plus 3 minus 5, there are actually 1, 2, 3 transformations that are happening in this particular function. And so we want to be able to identify what those three things are, so that'll help us when we're taking a test, it says what are the what what you know what happened in the graph. So here's one of the things we have to worry about. We got to worry about this negative right there, right there on the outside. It's not a very good little highlight. That's a little better. Okay. We have to worry about this x plus three part. Ooh, that's a horrible highlighter. All right. Right there. All right. And let's see here. Let me change that color to maybe an orange. We got to worry about this guy right here. So right here, what about this uh, negative sign? What do you guys think is happening with that negative sign? Right there. If I have a negative, if I say negative f of x, I'm basically multiplying this by a negative. What do you think's happened to our our graph? Yeah, so it's it's been it's reflecting across what? Reflect across x. You could say reflects across x, the x-axis, okay? All right, what about this um, x plus 3? Like if you have f of x plus 3, what happens with that part? Moves to the left. How many units? So that goes to the left three units. And finally, at the very end, we have this, if I said f of x and I take away a 5, what happens with that? Goes down 5. So when you guys are going to have a test, a lot of times I'll just say, hey, what are the transformations that happened in the, the graph? And we have to understand those, that's what we're going to be, be looking for. Okay? So right now, does everybody understand this graph right here? starts at zero zero so we're starting at zero zero where would i start looking at the beginning what would be the ordered pair that this would start out before i even look anywhere else if this is at zero zero if i went to the left three and down five where would i end up negative three negative five so of all the graphs that i'm looking for i'm looking for the one that starts out at what negative three negative 5. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. So let's see if I can see. Here it is right there. So negative 3, negative 5. So far, what is the only one that's been at negative 3, negative 5? It looks like there's two of them. What are the two graphs that are at negative 3, negative 5? A and C, right? A and C are at negative that's right there at negative 3, negative 5, and that right there is at negative 3, negative 5, okay? But what is, what, oh, sorry, a little too much. Sorry about that. Okay. So if I reflected this across the x-axis, would you guys agree it would, it would go down like, it would go down like that? So what am I what am I looking for? Even I know we're gonna we can use Desmos and we can check to see if we're right and stuff like that. But what if they took Desmos away and you were taking a test where you weren't allowed a calculator and you still had to choose the right answer? I want to make sure you guys know how to. So we're looking for a graph that does that goes down like that. So of of the two answers, which one do you think is the best answer? C or A? A. Okay. So I'll go down here. We'll check it. Hey, cool, we got it right. Okay, all right. So, obviously, you guys have Desmos. So, what could you guys do? You could just type in um, the square root of x. 
that's not the square root of x. And you could type in a negative square root of x plus 3. See that it goes 3 units to the left, and then go minus 5 and see that it's down there. Okay, so Desmos does give you some pretty good graphical tools. I want to see if you guys can kind of figure out things before you use Desmos. See if you can go back. So if you've already done certain things, go back, see if you can do it without Desmos and check it. Okay, so you're not just relying on Desmos as a as a crutch. Okay, so right here, what we're going to do, one of the things that says graphs of square and cube root functions, the other one is using graphing of exponential functions, and the other one is graphing logarithmic functions. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, is we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to, before we just use Desmos, we're going to kind of figure out what we think the answer is before we use Desmos to check it. So that's what I'd like you guys to do. So right here, what I want you guys to write down in your journal is this, for radical x minus 2, and we're just going to do a couple of problems. I'm not going to do more than a couple of problems on this, okay? So I want you guys to write that down, and we're going to talk about the transformations we think are happening in the graphs. I have a total of three transformations that I'm looking at, okay? I'm going to highlight the three transformations. I got one here. I got one here, and then I have one right there. So this 4, that represents this a times f of x, and a happens to be greater than a 1. So what do you guys think is happening when a is greater than 1 and that there's a 4 on the outside? Go ahead and pause. So guys, this is going to be a vertical stretch. So label it in your journal. This is called a vertical stretch. Okay? By a factor of 4, which means all of your y values are being multiplied by 4. Okay? When you when we compare the y values, we'll see the same x values, the y values will be 4 times greater. Okay? All right. Let's look at the next part. If I said, let's get a nice purple. Look at a nice purple here. All right, look at a nice, look at a nice purple here. Okay, so if I have um, f of x minus 2 right there, what is that telling us is happening in our function? 2 to the right, very good. So we have to say 2 to the right. Does everyone mean two, like 2 units to the right? Okay. Then the last thing right here, if I said f of x minus 6, we would just say 6 units down. So what do we always start with when we're looking at a square root function or a cube root function? Where do I always start with at 0, 0? I start with a vertex, like, where it's, like if, it's, if you have a vertex, start where the vertex is. Okay? So all I want you guys to do is be make sure you're paying attention, make sure you're writing stuff down, being with me. I'm not going to be spending all day here. But if you follow along, you'll have a better chance of understanding when you're doing it on your own. Okay? All right, looks like it's going. Okay, so right now, right here, where would I start if I had an ordered pair to start with? I was at 0, 0, but if I go to the 2 right and down 6, where am I going to end up? 2 right and down 6. At a 2 and a negative 6. So I'm looking for any graph that starts at a 2 and a negative 6, all right? And then it looks like all of my y values are going to be, afterwards, going to be multiplied by 4, all right? So we're going to have something that's going to be stretched vertically by a factor of 4. So right now, so far, that's looking, that's not bad, okay? Not going to choose B. Is C and A, are they both in the ball game? So right now we got between what? C and A. Whew. All right, so how about this? This is where you can use some ordered pairs. If you had to do this by hand, here's where you guys could use some ordered pairs. All right, so let's check it out. Ours was 4 radical x minus 2. 
right? Minus six. Is that, is that, did I get it right? Is that what you guys have written down on your paper? Okay, now let's make a little ordered pair. Where did we start out? We started out at a two and a negative six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a four. And if I plug in a four right there, what is four minus two? That's not good. I, I shouldn't use a four. That'd be bad. I shouldn't use a four. Sorry. Taking that away. I'm using a, I'm using a six. I'll explain why I'm using a six. If I use a four minus two, can you take the square root of two in your head? I mean, I can, but it's like 1.41 something. You know, it's not, it's not a very nice number. Okay. So what's six minus two? Six minus two is four. Six minus two is four. What's the square root of four? Two. What's four times two? Eight. What's eight minus six? Two. So if I'm at a six, I'm at a two. So what am I looking for now? If I wanted to do it without using Desmos, I could plug in one ordered pair and see if I figure out get a six and a two. So you guys see the six and two right there? That makes me feel a lot better about a than that right there. Okay. So some of you are like, there's like, there's no way I'm not going to be able to do that. So yes, what, what can you guys do if you need to? Go over to Desmos, type it in right here. So there's your original function. There's your four. What are we going to type in right here? X minus two and put minus six right there. And then what can you check? You can check your table and you're like, well, I don't see anything, but see that six, two right there. You can clearly see that it passes through a six and a two. So when you go back to your screen, yeah, where'd it go? There it is. There we go. You can see the six and two. You feel a lot better about your decision. Okay. So we're going to do one more. Okay, I'm going to do it by hand, and then I'm going to do it um, in Desmos. We do one more. So this is a cubic root function. So here's what I'd like you to do. Here's your cube root. Put y equals the cubic root of x, and we're looking at y equals three times the cubic root of x plus two. So we have two things happening in the graph. We've got the three. So that's that a times f of x. And then we have f of x plus 2. So what is the 3 doing to our function? Vertical what? Vertical stretch. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And then here we're just going up 2. So what's the easiest thing to do? Vertically stretch or just go up two? Up two. So where am, where am I looking at? I'm just looking at this point right there. That's where I always start. I just start right there. So if we're at zero, zero, and I know I'm going to go up two, where am I, where's, where's my new starting point going to be where I'm thinking about the graph? If I go up two, zero and a two. So in my, here's my new ordered, here's my ordered pairs I'm looking for. Here we go. My new graph, I'm going to be looking at a 0 and a 2. What would be an easy number right there to plug in that I could take the cubic root of? 9? Nine? 9 would be an easy number. I'll put, I'll put 9. No, wait, no, not 9. That would be hard. 27? That's too big. If I plug in a 27, the cubic root of 27 is... Three. If I take the cubic root of eight, that's two. I wish there was an easier number to take the cubic root of just to get me a one. What? No. What? One. Yes, the cubic root of one is one. Why? Because one times one times one is one. What's two times two times two? 
8. What's 3 times 3 times 3? 27. So the easiest number to plug in there is what number? 1. Okay. So if I plug that in, the cubic root of 1 is 1 times 3 is 3. What's 3 plus 2? 5. So I'm looking for a what? A 0 and a 2 and a 1 and a 5. That's what I'm looking for. 0 and a 2 and a 1 and a 5. You guys got that? 0, 2, 1, 5. That doesn't even have 0, 2. That doesn't have 0, 2. Oh, thank goodness. There's a 0, 2. There's a 0, 2. Okay. All right. But we got to find a what? A 0 and a 2. And would you guys agree 1's right there? Okay. Would you guys agree 5 is right about there? So I'm not, I'm not liking C right now. So is that 0 and a 2 right there? Is that a 1 and is that a, at a 5 right there? So I'm looking, okay, that looks a lot better. So I'm going to choose D. So before you do that, let me see if I have, I wish I would, I wish my screen wouldn't do that. There we go. Let's go over to Desmos. So let me show you guys how to get the cubic root, because sometimes you guys forget how to do cubic root. If you want to get cubic root in Desmos, you got to type this, this functions bar right there. Get that little functions. All right. One of the most annoying things as a teacher is like you show students how to do it, but they're not paying attention. Like 20 minutes later, like, how did you get that cubic root thing? And you're like, hit miscellaneous. Go to the right here where there's an int. What number am I going to type in there? Three. So here's our original function right there. Like. I would be paying attention to you if you were more interesting. You're just not very interesting, so I really don't want to feel like paying attention. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. Sorry. But Robin Williams is no longer with us, so you got me. All right. So we have three. Um, we had, uh, that was just an X, right? And then this was what, plus two? Like that? Okay. So you can kind of see what our new graph looks like. All right. But when you go to the table, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what did I say we had? A 0 and a 2 and a 1 and a 5. What was the other number I'd have to plug in before it, anything would work? You could take the cubic root of an 8, right? So an 8 would work. And then the other one would be you have to wait all the way until you get to, what, 27 before you could actually find a, a point. Because those are the only ones you can take cubic roots and get integers. All right? So now I feel so much better about choosing that answer. Okay? All right, so I want you guys to look at the transformations, see if it's reflecting. So right now, what's happening? It's reflecting across the x-axis. It's shifting to the left three units, and it's going down five. So which one is reflecting across the x-axis? If it reflects across, it goes down like this. It's going to the left three, and looks like A is the answer. Before I click it, Oh, yeah. So A is definitely the answer. Okay. On this one right here, this one's a little bit trickier. We've got another what? Another cubic root function. Okay. So what's happening? It's being reflected across the x-axis. So if it's being reflected across the x-axis, what's going to happen? You're going to have a part that looks like this and a part that looks like, not very good, so you're going to have a graph that goes this direction, okay? So that's that part. What's the 2? It's going to go up higher because it's going to be vertically stretched. So it's going to be going up actually a little bit more vertically, so it's going to more, look more like that. How many units to the, right, uh, to the right is it going to go? It's going to go 3 units right, right? 3 units to the right and 2 units, two units up. So... What's the ordered pair that I'm going to start out at? If I go three units to the right and two units up, I'm going to be at a what? A three and a two. So that's step one. Figure out where you're starting from. Step two, just plug in one other point. That's all I want you to do. Plug in one other point. So I'm starting at a three and a two. Okay? Then, can I take the cubic root of a one? Right? It's 1. So what number would I have to plug in there? I'd have to plug in a 
4. So here we go. Negative 2. Cubic root of 4 minus 3, which is 1, plus 2. So what is negative 2 times 1 plus 2? It's the same as negative 2 plus 2. We're going to be at 4 and a what? 4 and a 0. Doing this by hand because sometimes calculators are taken away. Okay? All right, just ask some students who are taking calculus at Laferno. Their calculators have been taken away from them. Okay? So three and a two, four and a zero. Let's see if I'm let's see if I'm right there. Okay. So I'm gonna clear this out. I'll go back. Might make it faster. Okay. This was a negative two. Uh this was was it x what was it? X minus was it x minus three? And this was plus two. Alright, so if we look at our table, if I type in a four, whew, we got it right. Four and a zero. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a graph that has a what? A four and a zero, right? And a what? Where did we start at? Three and a two, right? Three and a two, four and a zero. All right, let's check it out. Uh, there we go. Four and a zero. Does that, is that at four zero? Right there. No, it isn't. Is that at four zero? Ha ha! Is that at four zero? All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Is that at four zero? No. So sometimes, how many points do you literally have to find just to make sure that you're correct? One extra point. One extra point. Well, how do we? How's the? How's it? How do you find that one extra point? You can use Desmos if you want, but you can also find one point right here by finding a three and a two, and then you find one more, which was our four and a zero, to make sure that you're typing it in correctly. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to work on that. If you're done with that, work on it without a calculator. See if you can do it without Desmos. Okay?